So I have an update for you in some news coming out of the Supreme Court, and it has to do with rifle magazine bans and what impact the recent Rahimi decision will have on some of these cases and some potential GVRs. So let's talk about what is now happening. Now, really quick before we jump into this video, I want to ask you all for a huge favor. Looking at some of my analytics, about 60% of all my viewers are actually not subscribed to the channel. So if you want to support this two-way content, if you want to support the channel, one of the free ways to do that is just simply liking the video and subscribing. We've reached over 700,000 subscribers, and that's absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. And again, regardless, thank you guys for everything you do for me and the channel. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, we have some news that we have to break down, and it's in regards to some cases that are pending in front of the Supreme Court, including five or six cases dealing with rifle magazine bans, and then two other cases that have been sent also to conference for consideration that are likely going to be GVR'd this coming week. Many of you now have a ton of questions about what is gonna happen in a bunch of critical rifle magazine ban cases because of the Supreme Court's recent 2A decision. A lot of these cases were kind of in limbo. They were in holding patterns and we we're waiting to see what the Supreme Court was gonna do in the next big 2A case, which was the Rahimi case. And now we have that decision and there's gonna be a bunch of dominoes that are now going to fall over the next couple weeks. You may recall that recently there were five or six cases out of the state of Illinois dealing with the Protect Illinois Communities Act, challenging the state's rifle and magazine ban that they put in place and some of their outright defiance of what the Supreme Court said in Bruin. Now, a lot of those cases went through the process and eventually they ended their way back up the Supreme Court on an emergency basis. And they were seeking for the Supreme Court to step in early and, you know, effectively strike down that rifle and magazine ban in the state of Illinois. Now, all those cases include the NHR versus Naperville case, the Harrell versus Raul case, the Barnett versus Raul case, the GOA versus Raul case, the Langley versus Kelly case, and then also Herrera versus Raul. So those are all the cases that are seeking for the Supreme Court to finally intervene and stop the state and lower court defiance of what the Supreme Court said in Bruin, specifically when it is applied to these rifle and magazine bans. Now, these cases were originally kind of in a weird limbo phase. Uh, they were sent to the Supreme Court on a cert petition. And now once again, coming out of the Supreme Court, we got news that they were rescheduled, relisted for a new conference. And that was last week, I believe on Thursday. And they went to the same conference that two other cases went to conference. And those were some of the bump stock cases that are likely now going to be GVR'd, which means that they are going to be granted, vacated, and remanded. Now, all indications were that before the Rahimi decision, there was some speculation that maybe there was going to be some language in Rahimi that would impact these rifle magazine ban cases. And that's why they were being relisted a bunch of times. And then also maybe that's why the Antonio case was on hold, which deals with the uh, state of New York's new concealed carry law, the CCIA that they passed in direct defiance to Bruin. And then also we saw that two other bump stock cases went to the same conference. And the speculation was that those were simply going to be GVR'd in light of what the Supreme Court just ruled in the Cargill case. So Conferences were very important this week. Uh, there's gonna be some cleanup conferences probably over the next couple weeks. But with the Rahimi decision, there's a lot of questions about why were these cases relisted? Why were they not just kicked? Why was the Antonio case put on hold? And what is the Supreme Court's potential plan? Because keep in mind, the Supreme Court already had one other rifle ban case in front of them. And that was the Bianchi case, which dealt with the Maryland ban on so-called assault weapons. Uh, the Bianchi case was very similar to all these Illinois cases. It was on a merits decision, but we we're waiting for the Fourth Circuit en banc panel to actually issue their merits decision. So what ended up happening is these Illinois cases and the Maryland case went to the same conference. The Maryland case was eventually kicked, was denied review, and now we're going to wait for the Fourth Circuit en banc panel to issue that decision. But the Supreme Court instead ended up relisting a bunch of times the Illinois cases, which is interesting because those are all on an interlocutory posture, which is a little bit worse of procedural posture than what was going on in Maryland. So a lot of people were interested about what is the Supreme Court doing? And then also we got news that they put the Antonio case on hold, which means that they thought Rahimi would impact that concealed carry law case. And so now after Rahimi, a lot of people are curious about what language in Rahimi maybe is going to impact these cases and what is going to happen going forward. Now, if you're not familiar about what is going on in Illinois with these rifle magazine bans and what impact this Rahimi case could have on that, you know, one of these cases, again, is the Harrell versus Raul case. And I think that's a good example to kind of track what has happened in these cases. What's really interesting about this specific case is the hardline approach that the state of Illinois took, essentially arguing that the most common firearms, the most common rifles, the AR-15s and AKs, the semi-automatic rifles 
are not in common use for lawful purposes, that they are dangerous or unusual weapons. They don't even use the correct analysis of dangerous and unusual. They say they're dangerous or unusual, and therefore they're not arms and they're not protected by the Second Amendment. And the state of Illinois can do whatever they want as far as regulations on them. And that is the question that has made its way back up the Supreme Court on an emergency basis for review. And like I mentioned multiple times now, this case and all these cases have been relisted. Uh, they've gone back and forth to the Supreme Court for new conferences, the most recent one being last week. And that conference also included a bunch of cases which are a reaction to the cargo bump stock decision. But the bigger looming questions out of the conferences in the Rahimi decision last week is what is the Supreme Court going to do with the conferences of all these Illinois cases? Why were they continuing to relist them? You know, what in Rahimi were they thinking was going to impact these Illinois cases? Now, I think after we got the Rahimi decision, a lot of people are scratching their head, curious about what language in there was the Supreme Court so concerned about or thinks is maybe going to impact these Illinois cases? Now, I, I don't think it's any specific language. I know some people maybe would point to the language talking about how the Second Amendment is not unlimited or maybe how the Second Amendment and these regulations are not stuck in amber and you know how some of the protected arms are not stuck in amber. But with that, we also had a lot of language prior in Heller and Bruin that pointed to the same thing. So I don't think that's the language necessarily that the Supreme Court was considering maybe is going to impact all these Illinois cases. Instead, I think it is the general methodology and application of Bruin in the Rahimi case and the text history and tradition analysis that was reaffirmed in Rahimi, applied in Rahimi in a little bit more of a nuanced way that the Supreme Court maybe is thinking is going to impact these Illinois rifle magazine ban cases, and then maybe also the Antonio case that they also put on hold. Keep in mind in Rahimi, they were looking at a different question dealing with the possession of firearms from people subject to domestic violence restraining orders, uh, but they still had to apply the text history and tradition analysis. And they reaffirmed that text history and tradition, again, is the correct analysis. There was a little bit more of a nuanced analysis when it came to the how and why aspect of tradition and what type of analogs are relevantly similar to justify a state's restriction or a government's restriction on the Second Amendment and our various rights to keep and bear arms. And maybe it's that more nuanced how and why approach that we saw play out in Rahimi that the Supreme Court thinks is going to be relevant for all these Illinois cases. Now, again, a lot of speculation. I think a lot of people are very confused about how the Supreme Court thinks Rahimi is going to impact these Illinois cases. Why did they kept relisting them? Why did they put the Antonio case on hold? Because there's not something super glaring that's sticking out in Rahimi that everybody's saying, okay, yes, for sure, this section right here is impacting all of these other 2A cases, and that's why they put it on hold. So it's going to be interesting to see what plays out this upcoming week. Again, we got the Rahimi decision. That was a eight to one decision. The only dissenting judge was Judge Thomas. Judge Thomas wanted a more um, traditional approach. He wanted a more restrictive approach to the analysis of text history and tradition, but he was the only one in favor of really keeping it hyper restrictive. All the other judges jumped the line and wanted a little bit more of a a broader how and why application, in my opinion. Um, so that's also what's going to be interesting to see how that impacts a lot of these other cases going down the line. I know some people say that this was a super, super narrow decision when it comes to Rahimi. And in some ways it was, but in other ways, there was a lot of negative language, in my opinion, that we're going to see lower courts latch onto and try to use to justify various restrictions, tried to say that there are plenty of historical relevantly similar laws that they are going to use to justify some of these state bans, maybe like in Illinois with the rifle and magazine bans. So again, it's going to be very important to watch closely what happens in the upcoming weeks with all these cases. And as we get more news about what the Supreme Court wants to do with the Illinois cases, and then also the New York CCIA case, I will let you guys know and I will update you guys. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.